Good evening and hello to everyone. Welcome to the Hemingway Jones Live Fountain Pen Show. The channel for people that are curious about fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling. Come along with me for this next hour and let's see where we end up as we explore many different Ideas. I see the all the usual suspects are here in the comments. Welcome, everyone. I hope everyone's well. So tonight's going to be a fun show. There's a, a bunch of different things I want to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about the channel. I want to show you some new stuff that came in. Got a very touching gift from a member of the channel that I'll share. Uh, I'll keep it anonymous because I don't want to embarrass him, but very nice. I wanted to show everyone and share that. I'm seeing some love for my sweater. Thank you. It's very important that we acknowledge the sweaters. Thank you. So um, the big event tonight will be an unboxing. And that'll be fun because you never know what's in there. And I'm really excited about it. And we'll talk a bit about that. I also want to take some time. I want to say hello to everyone in India. I've noticed that a lot of viewers are watching from India. And India is one of my favorite sources for fountain pen stuff. So I'm a huge fan of Ayush paper, which comes from India, and Krishna ink. So it makes me super excited to see that India is well represented. And I, I say that because you can see in the analytics for YouTube, which countries people watch from. And for me, it's the United States and then it's India. And um, I just think that's fantastic. So if you're watching from India, hello, and thank you for being here. It means a lot. So I hope everyone got to see the interview with Aida. That was so much fun. And I really love doing interviews. I love to bring different voices into the channel different people who are telling their stories and that are maybe YouTubers or somehow in the fountain pen journaling sphere, but even beyond. I just think it makes it a little bit more interesting that we, our rotations become ever more elliptical and we're bringing more and more people into the fold. So it was super fun. It was very nice of her to join us. It was also a great opportunity for me to do a live that's more on European time because there are a lot of people that watch this channel from that time zone from the central European time zone and all of Europe of course so I will be looking for opportunities to do that again very very soon with a whole bunch of different people including Brendan from Atlas Stationers who will be joining us later next month meaning February so Look forward to that. It's always fun when he is here. So that would be really good. Gino says that Aida was a great interview. I'm so glad you enjoyed that. It, it She is really delightful. She has a lot of great ideas. I hope a lot of you checked out her channel. I'm sure she's going to take off. I think it's um, really great stuff. I enjoy it very much. Kaylee's here. Hey, y'all. How are you? Nice to see you. So lovely to see all you guys. So um, another shout out to all the members of the channel. Thanks for being here. Also want to say if you're watching and you want to exchange letters with me, you can join the channel as a Cognoscenti or Illuminati member and do a letter exchange. It's super fun. You get to see my handwriting up close and hopefully it's not too... Um, horrendous but would love to have you back and doing the letter exchange is a super fun way of doing it some more interesting things on the horizon too all right i want to get some content in here so i'm not just speaking without purpose so first of all the letter exchange is great getting to know you guys better is so moving getting to see your handwriting or your letter folding skills i don't know if ali j's here tonight but she can fold a letter like origami. It's just magical. 
And um, some of you guys have just amazing expressive handwriting. Super great. I, I was really enjoying seeing all of your stationery. Well, one member of the channel, I don't know if I mentioned this or if he just has some kind of ESP, but my favorite place for buying used fountain pens is Peyton Street Pens. And on there is a pen that is a Schaefer, um, a snorkel pen. I see the Alley J's here. Hello. Nice to see you. Oh, oh, wow. I get my letters on the way. Great. Psyched about that. So I've always wanted a snorkel filled pen and I never had one. And there was one on Peyton Street that was burgundy and it had the stickers on it, which I thought was so cool because I do kind of like that experience of, of um, new old stock. I have a typewriter that's a letter of Ventidue from the 50s. It's in the box from Olivetti. And it was so cool that I was the first one to unbox it and to put a ribbon in there and type. And if I show it, and I probably will show it on the channel at some point soon, it looks brand new. It's just so neat to have that experience of a brand new typewriter, you know, 50 years later. But so there was this burgundy snorkel pen and I really liked it, but I didn't buy it because I felt like I felt kind of wrong tearing off the stickers, you know, um, but it's weird how these things happen. It's almost like you magnetize something. If you think about it and you kind of want it, it comes to you. This time, through the incredibly thoughtful, generous agency of, of one of the members. So I just want to show you. And I won't say his name because we were talking privately. And I have a feeling that he doesn't want me to because he told me not to say it publicly. But look at this he sent. Isn't this amazing? And I haven't filled it yet because I don't have a lot of experience. Got a little fuzz on there. I don't have a lot of experience with snorkel pens, so I really want to make sure I know what I'm doing. That's a twist cap. Look at this awesome nib, guys. And the snorkel comes out of the hole underneath the nib, and it sucks up ink that way. And I'm thinking, like, it's going to have to be, the ink here is going to have to be Scribo Rosso Chianti or Diamine Oxblood, or maybe I'll mix it up and put Diamine's um, Writer's Blood or Dragon's Blood in there. What do you guys think? You know, that it's just really cool. I'm just really excited to write with it. I don't know if it's a medium or a fine or, or what it is. It, it, feels, it feels like a medium, but I, I could be wrong probably told me and I've it, it escapes me but what a gorgeous pen and you guys know I love vintage pens and I just wrote a script for an episode um, of the channel on vintage pens that I haven't filmed yet and now I have a really cool pen that I can help focus on so it's super Super cool. John Manuel is suggesting Dragon's Blood, right? I haven't used Dragon's Blood in a while. That might be one to um, that might be one to uh, break out. It's been a while, but Ali J says Writer's Blood. That's good too. You know the Diamine really does red well, and one of the things about red as a color is that you have sort of the visceral reds, the sort of blood clot rich scarlet reds that are really great to write with because they have all that contrast and they're sort of in the darker part of the color rather than the more corrective reds that pure red bright that I saw quite a bit of in grade school maybe you guys did too when you got your homework assignments graded by the teacher but I think in a way red can communicate that, that our inks and our choice of inks do communicate subtle things to us. And in many cases, it may not be universal. Maybe in no case is it universal, but let's say certainly in North America, if you're showing a pure red ink, it's going to feel corrective or almost like an accounting negative, like you're losing money in an accounting book. It has that kind of a connotation. 
Now you say, oh, I'm in the red, I'm in the black. So I tend to like reds that aren't pure reds. And I'm thinking of like Peniter's red is very red and it feels corrective. Whereas ox blood and dragon's blood and writer's blood is very much in the dark. What I call visceral reds, they look like blood and guts and whatnot. You know, they just look like viscera. And they tend to give you a lot of contrast on the page. And I sort of feel like those reds communicate something a little different. It's more like something antiquated, something very cool. So I could be wrong, but I just feel like that's what inks communicate. Now, what do other ink colors communicate? I think that's actually a really interesting idea, and it's probably a future video now that it's come to me. Hi, Art Mangle. Nice to have you here. So um, I'm not sure. What does brown ink say to you? Hey, Wolverine, how are you? We spoke earlier. Nice to see you. Art Mangle has more love for the sweater. Thank you. So I'm going to get back to this ink concept, but I want to talk about the sweater for a second. You guys probably know I'm not into logo clothing. I'm not a big fan of anything that screams brand identity. And then I always tell you guys, too, that I often contradict myself. And I'm sort of liberated by those contradictions. And logical thought, if a statement is both true and false, it's hard to refute the argument, right? So I'm not a big fan of brand identity. I don't, I don't think a brand makes me cool. I think I make a brand cool. And, um, but anyway, long story short, look at this thing. I mean, come on, could you get it? But to see, the thing is this particular brand is like the home team. If you live where I live and North of here, I mean, LL Bean, in New England, it's like the Red Sox or something. And also kind of nice cause it's woven. So, and it's also the old school logo. This was the LL Bean logo back in the 1980s. So it just, for me, this is like macaroni and cheese. This is like a comfort food sweater. And today it's really kind of chilly. And I got home from work and I put on some flannel and I threw this on top and I just thought it would be perfect for the live and give you guys some color. So there's the story behind the sweater. So I hope you guys don't mind. So, but back to ink colors. And I think this is something I might work with for an actual video, but what does brown ink say? To me, brown ink feels sort of antique, like, you know, iron gall that's turning or sepia or something along those lines. I think black is probably the most generic, black and blue, where maybe you don't, you don't get a lot. It doesn't give you a lot of insight. Purple is going to give you a certain, you know, exuberance. Purple was the color of royalty. Because in the ancient world, the only way to get the color purple was from a, um, I think, believe it's called a music snail. And it was a species of snail that lives in the Mediterranean. They would take it out and you had to do it just right to get the gland of the snail without destroying it and uh, sort of fouling the color. And then it was an elaborate drying process to get it into a pigment. Very expensive. Very beautiful. Still made in some places. And um, this fantastic royal purple that's also not particularly consistent because it depends on what the snails are eating and what your mix is. So really interesting. Natural dye. So I guess if you see somebody with purple, I either think of Prince or uh, something loyal or something along those eyes. Those lines, rather. So very, very cool stuff. Techno Raptor says, wasn't expecting the giant brand name advertising. It's so true, but it's more than just advertising this sweater because this isn't their logo now. It's their old logo. From like the 90s and before. So, And you need a kick around sweater. You need ones that you're going to abuse. So I want to share something else with you guys before we get to the main event. The main event... I know I'm ducking out of frame, but this is the main event. Okay, so we're going to have some fun with that. But I want to show you something else that came in. So I picked these up. And um, it's my ever, everlasting quest 
for beginner pens. And these sort of reminded me of Charleston's. Uh, watch them in Charleston's. But I love the colors. So these are two Jinhao 82s. I don't know their official names color wise, but I call this banana and this avocado. And I just love how, like, this one's clearly pastel, pastel. And this one is clearly 80s avocado or even earlier, like 70s. Remember when bathrooms were like this? Have you ever seen someone who has a toilet and dresser and uh, tile of this color. So it just, once again, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm in a comfort zone, but this just felt like macaroni and cheese. And I haven't filled them yet. I have no idea how good or bad they are. There's that beautiful Jin Hal logo and nib. I'm a huge fan of their iconography and their nibs. So, well, <laughs> the aesthetics of their nibs. Not a huge fan of how their nibs have been performing with me historically. But um, that's what these are. Oh, there we go. Nice converter in there. So, haven't filled them. Ooh, you know what's kind of neat? The converter is sort of squared. So, it should make it a little easier to turn. But they feel pretty nice. They, um, I mean, they're clearly plastic, but that's okay. These were a whopping $3 each, guys. $3. So, and they're both medium nibs. So I'm hoping I have better luck with the Jin Hao medium. So Linda Cooper says, my parents have a fridge, that avocado green. See what I mean? So it, it kind of gives out a little bit of comfort vibe, right? And then this banana is just charming. Um, I did pass the opportunity to get one of those um, food a, if that's how one says it, or food. F it can't be food. It's got to be food a, right? Nibs. Um, I might buy one of those because it does come that way too. I just don't have any skill that can do anything with that. But um, very cool. So John Manuel also has the avocado refrigerator. So very cool. So yes, three dollars, guys. Have no idea how they write, but I'm hoping to eventually get a pen that I can pass out and not feel um, bad about. That it's going to write and it's going to be reliable, and that I can use over and over. So we debuted a new pen on this space a week ago. Um, Kaylee says they look like Pro Gear. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, they do look like sailors. They look a little bit like miniature Charleston's too, but you're right. The clip is very, very sailor, isn't it? Yeah. The sailors come in these cool pastel colors. That I don't know. Okay. So I debuted a, um, a pen that I had to have last week. So I won't say too, too much about it, except to show it to you once again. This is the Visconti Mythos Apollo, which is a really interesting pen. I have an interesting ink in here. I have Varangel's Faust, which is a black ink with some shimmer, but you can't really see too much shimmer. The color looks pretty nice here, doesn't it? Okay, so why am I telling you about this pen again? The reason is... I decided to review it in a pretty straightforward review, which you don't often see on this channel. So this is the channel for people curious about fountain pens. So you can certainly learn a lot. But this particular pen, I just I felt like it just sort of deserved more of a straightforward review. So I just did one on design, on the nib, on the writing experience, all that. And I also moved it up in rotation. So that's what's coming out this Friday. And why did I move it up in rotation? Because these are selling out everywhere. So if you're on the fence and you want to learn about it, I thought I should get a review out there quickly. So this Friday is a review of this. Some of the most beautiful B-roll that I've ever filmed. 
um, small game B-roll, you know, not like me out and about, but down paper, beautiful flowers. My wife keeps buying flowers, so I'm using them in the shots. They're really lovely. So, so look for that Friday. Okay, guys. Very, very cool stuff. And just the last thing, the pen I've been using lately the most is this. The Waterman 5 with a flex nib. An incredible from almost extra fine to double broad flex nib, which I rarely flex, but I love writing with this. It, it just really gives your handwriting a vintage look. By the way, look very closely, guys. Do you see the breather hole? I'll try to steady my arm. Do you see the breather hole in the nib? It's in the shape of a keyhole. Isn't that cool? It's just really expressive. It's almost, it's almost like spooky. It's almost like dark academia or like Harry Potter-ish, as if there's some little key somewhere and you can insert it in the nib, turn it, and it will activate better handwriting or something. But it's really an extraordinary nib. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, almost all the letters I've written to members in the letter exchange, to the Cognoscenti and Illuminati members were exchanging letters, written in this pen. It's really cool. I'm really enamored with it. I feel like it makes my handwriting have a little bit more finesse. Um, certainly much more line variation and everything else. So, very cool stuff. All right, you guys are in it. Uh, Simon, have you gotten any updates from Conway Stewart? I have not heard from Conway Stewart in a while, but I will report back once I do, guys. I do. Art Mingle is a fan of the Waterman. What is it about Waterman? Vintage Watermans are so awesome. They're just so interesting. I also, I guess you can't really see it from here, but I've brought my journals out, my old travel journals. So this is my old Venice travel journal with my actual name on it. Isn't that brilliant? Um, so very cool stuff in here indeed. Um, really neat maps and things in these journals. I hope they still make them. I'm trying to find the, the one with the gray journal. All my crazy drawings. Really bad handwriting, by the way. Like, what was I getting at there? Look at this guy. It's pretty interesting, huh? Pietro Longhi. So, oh, writing on several different parts of the paper. So really interesting stuff. These are the sort of notes you take when you're traveling and you're at the site and you want to get something down on paper really fast. So I have these here. I thought they'd be fun to be able to reference quickly all this really cool stuff. Oh, my plane tickets are still in here. It's pretty, remember when there were plane tickets? That's so funny. You ever think that things like plane tickets would become a relic? But see, this is kind of handy. It has a map of Rome with a grid that you then can get a little more specific. Different itineraries and things. Here's the maps. So pretty handy stuff. I had a lot of fun with this. I took a lot of interesting notes and things. Okay. We're burying the lead, right, guys? You, you probably don't care about this as much as you do the unboxing. So should we dig into the box? Is it time? I think it probably is. Let's see what the comments are saying. Uh, John Manuel says, I would like to get a Waterman 52 and a half. John, I'll say one thing about that pen. It's absolutely brilliant, and I love writing with it, but it's very slight. 
It's very thin, very delicate, and it doesn't hold very much ink. You write maybe three paragraphs and you have to ink it up again because that pen was made in a time when everyone had one of these sitting on their desks or something like it. So it was easy to refill your ink when there were ink wells everywhere. And the 52 and a half is not designed to hold a lot. The five holds a lot more. I could write a couple days. So that's just one consideration. But the 52 and a halves are very cheap. I think that's a great deal. Okay, Ali J says, can't wait to see what Atlas sent you. So I'm burying the lead. Here's, here's the box, guys. Lovely Atlas stationers there. Excuse me. I don't have wine tonight. I, I remembered too late to open a bottle. So. So, so let me tell you the story behind this, okay? this The great thing about this is that Atlas, Brendan, sent me this to do some content on a different platform. So there's no reason why I can't just share it with you guys. So it's ultimately going to be on a different platform. So I can do anything here because my responsibility is to post stuff over there. So no, John Manuel, it is not vodka. This is not vodka. I wish it were. It's just water. Okay. So we have this box. I know you're all very excited to see what's in there. Me too. So we're going to use the Benchmade Bailout. My favorite pocket knife. Maybe we'll open the top. I just sharpened this too. I use these knives for opening boxes and often for cutting articles out in the New York Times. Put this away, but here you go. So we have box some paper first thing we're gonna do get rid of the paper now we're gonna take out the shipping label it has all my stats on there get that out of the way I'm gonna keep it close because I'm not sure I'm gonna know what everything in here is so I might need that oh so nice so we got a really nice packing postcard and it says a really nice message with some with really nice handwriting in that sort of corrective red that we were speaking of earlier, but it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. You know, that tells you another thing though. You write can also sort of communicate like joy and love. Um, cheers to a cheerful day. I think it's Teresa. Not sure, but look at the face as a nib. That's pretty great. Love that. Love it, guys. Okay. So we got more paper. Postcard. I keep these. All right. So now we have a package like this and a package like this. Get rid of the box. What should we open up first? Should we open up inks? Or should we open up what appears to be pens, guys? Let's go for inks because I like to prolong it. What's the Oscar Wilde line? The suspense is killing me. I hope it will last. It's a shame my daughter's not here. She loves this kind of packing material. Love this. Sorry, guys. Okay, wow, this is really cool. I'm trying not to say cool. I think cool is probably the least descriptive way to describe something. What does that tell you? It doesn't really tell you anything. Okay. So this is really interesting. It looks very retro. 
which I really like. Really beautiful label in cafe. I'm gonna look at the packing slip to see what it is exactly. So it is. Oh, which one is it, guys? Oh, okay. It looks like it's Karataki Meiji No Eero Bottled Ink. Very cool. That is not an ink I'm used to. So this is a new one. Should we look inside? I think we should. All right, here's a trick. I, I have a really hard time with boxes. I always trim my nails, so I don't ever have a nail to use. So I always take my pocket knife and I go underneath it like this, and then I just like twist. And I open it that way. So it seems to work. I'm sure any flat object would work. You know, this might be, these inks would probably be great to put in my Jin Hao too. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at this bottle, guys. Look at that. What do you think of that? Everyone get a good look. How about you guys in the back? Can you see? Remember when the teacher would do that? Pretty neat, right? So very, very interesting. Ooh, nice noise too. I love that pressurized ink noise. The next one I open, I'll open it by the microphone. Okay, now this is interesting because it's not what I thought. Do you see that? It's like a deep teal stained black kind of ink. I was expecting black. And it's not black. It looks like it's like a dark teal. It's really beautiful. Fantastic bottle. Love the box. So really interesting. I can't wait to dive in. It has a little slip. Should we just kind of see if it tells us what the color is? Wow, there's a whole like story of color. I don't see the one that this says, but, oh, here it is. It's a beautiful selection of colored inks, which are inspired by popular colors from the Meiji era of Japan. The Meiji era is an era of Japanese history, which extended from 1868 to 1912. Wow. Kuretake Company was founded during the Meiji era, 1902. Now in 2022, in commemoration of the 120th anniversary of our founding, we carefully chose six colors of ink reflecting on the Meiji period. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Still not entirely sure which one this is. Oh, okay. It's Coro Ganiero. Coro Ganiero became popular during the middle of the Meiji area into the Taisho era. The color is characterized by a dark, dull, bluish green color and was used often as the color for store clerk aprons. Well, that's something. That's really interesting. What do you guys think of that? I'm excited. I actually really love dark colors. So this is perfect. Perfect. So there we go. So that's one. I better pick up the pace. At this pace, we're not going to be done before midnight. Okay, our next ink is the um, Andorillium Common Loon Black. Okay, so this is this is great because the loon, I believe, is the state bird of Maine. And since we're talking about L.L. Bean, it really fits with our theme. So, cut the seal, flip it up. Oh, you guys want to see a swatch of the Meiji ink? Can I pull that off? I don't think I have anything to swatch with, guys. That's the only thing. But it does seem kind of wrong, right, to show inks without showing you some kind of color. So let's let's pull something. I'm going to back up and go to the Meiji ink. And show you the color. I'm going to improvise. With the Claire Fontaine paper. Take one of these out. Okay. 
not the prettiest. I'm just going to dip it in, I think. Because I can't figure out how else to do it. Because if I used a... Um... Oh, you know what? I'll dip it with the cap. If I used something else, like a dip pen, I'd have to clean it, and I don't have anything to clean it with. So here we go. Can you see that? It's pretty green. It's green greener than I thought. What do you think, guys? It's a little greener, which I like. So that is the Meji ink from Karatake. So it's a greenish. Now, ultimately, these will all go into my ink library, which you guys have seen before. And that's my ink library is always handy. I recently did Faust, the one that's in my mythos. This is Faust. So just to give you some ideas. And this is that Earl Grey tea, the orange. And this is the Great Gatsby, which is a very actionable Oops, sorry, purple. And in case you're curious, Serenity Blue and Den Hag. Some pretty nice inks. Okay, moving right along. You're very patient. I appreciate that. So if you ever looked at my desk in videos and wondered why I have such an old desk, it's because I use like knives to just cut things on it like a cutting board. And if I had a very nice desk, I wouldn't do that. So Common Loon Black, pretty great bottle, right? Although this one is sealed, so I'm going to try to figure this out. I like this little jam jar. Isn't that what this is? And this is a kind of jar that a little bit of like a raspberry preserve might come with your breakfast. So, all right, let's let's swatch common loon, shall we? Oh, wait, the noise. Ready? That's good. I'm gonna do an ASMR video soon. I'm gonna do the whole thing with. I'm gonna find one of those really scribey nibs. Scribing is that noise that your nib makes on paper. That's my word for it, and I like it. Because a scribe is also somebody who copies manuscripts in the 19th century. But I'm going to get a really scribey nib that's going, shh, shh, and I'm going to talk like, and then the nib touches the paper slowly. It's going to be fun. Okay, let's take a look at what this looks like, shall we? C said, Atlas sent me jam. Atlas might send me jam. I can see Brendan sending me jam. Oh, wow. This is nice, guys. Very black. Very, very black. I like this. I'm go I just want to put the cap on. I'll show it to you again. Plus, I want to give it a chance to dry a little. Just let it settle in a bit. Right. Okay. Raspberry preserves. Loon black. Perfect. Here's the color. Okay, very black. Jose's digging it. Thank you, Jose. I'm glad you're enjoying this. I'm trying to keep the show moving while describing these and not wearing these. Imagine if I messed up my sweater after spending so much time speaking about it. So, I am in search of a black ink that's glossy, that looks a bit wet after you write with it. Could this be it? I don't know. But it's exciting, because you never know. Okay. Sorry. Fair and Jewel, guys. 
Seven Colored Ocean. Seven Colored Ocean. What do you think of that? Wolverine asked, did I get any blue inks? Um, not, not so much. This is like a light green, the Meji. The Loon is black. And this, I guess this could be blue-ish. Might be purplish. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, guys. All right, I'm going to show you this one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Isn't that beautiful? I love these bottles. These bottles, to me, sort of look like little uh, whiskey decanters. That's what I like about them. They look like little crystal decanters, which gives them sort of a, a magical property. All right, I'm going to open it and we'll see what it's like. That one's hard. Hold on. Okay. Not as pressurized. It just did a little, a little aspiration. It just whispered its way into the world. Okay. Welcome. Seven colored ocean. Okay. Here's the cap. What's the color, ladies and gentlemen? I'm dying to know. Hey, Jared Serrato's here. Hello, Jared. Get some paper in here. The um, ink level is not that high, like, if this were noodlers, I'd have no trouble taking a sample. Oh, okay, guys. This is this is surprising. So it looks sort of um I don't know, how would you describe this? Almost in the aubergine category, maybe not quite, but certainly purpley. Purpley, like that kind of other eggplant, not the reddish, but more toward the blue. But when you see it, you're going to be very, very surprised, I think. What do you think of that? Much more blue. Like super saturated blue, like a sapphire. This one is, this one's pretty brilliant. This is, um, this one's pen worthy, right? Like right away, like I'm kind of excited. Should we, should we look? Should we indulge ourselves? Kill two birds at one stone. See if, well, I should be washing this first, but let's see. Although, what if I want to put it in one of my other pens? Ah, you know what? Let's just see. What are you worried about? Let's see what happens, shall we? Okay. All right, I'm going to have to make a little noise. Forgive me. But I need to wipe this off. I wasn't quite prepared for this. But you never know. Remember at the beginning of the show I said, you never know where this will take you. By the way, I didn't even test to see if the converter was in. So. Could have been ugly. But it wasn't. It's a little sloppy, guys. A little sloppy. Let's see what happens. Sorry about the noise. I know a lot of you listen to this at night before you go to bed, so I'm somewhat cognizant of that. I don't want it to be too jarring. All right, so let's see what happens. Got a little bit on my hands. Where would I be if I didn't? So. Oh, this is nice. Okay, I don't want too many critiques of my handwriting. I mean, I'm writing back kind of backward and weird. Okay. 
What do you guys think? It's kind of nice, right? Can I also say that the Jin Hao in the medium is kind of nice? I'm going to write regular, regularly because I want to see if it works. Oh gosh, I got a little ink on my hand. Oh, this is nice. It's kind of wet, guys. I may have actually had a success with Jin Hao, and you got to witness it live. I've been trying for so long. It's noisy. Can you hear it? It's got a great sound. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Medium. Jin Hao, 82. I'm a fan. See, this is good because I'll probably do a review of this soon and I can just use this ink. Also, when I put it into my ink library, I just need to use a brush to get some of the ink out. But I can just write with that pen, which is pretty great. The inks were fun, right? This was more fun than I was expecting. I kind of thought we'd blow through the inks and get right to the pens. Am I, am I wrong? I mean, I see a lot of you are still there, so hopefully you're enjoying it as much as I am. And what I don't like about the bearing jewels, they get these, these little uh, pamphlets and they get stuck. And it's hard to um, put the ink back exactly as it came out, which I like to do. So, Oh, this is their swatch. So maybe that's more accurate, what it's meant to look like. Very cool. If you're joining us late, I am unboxing a care package that was sent from Atlas Stationers, Brendan, who will be on the channel later in the month. And he sent this for me to make content on a different platform. So I can do whatever I want over here. He'll never see this. I don't think he watches my channel. Except when he's on. Okay, here we go. I call this the main event, but I think the ink was the main event. That was so fun. I need to have some water. Let me take a look at some of your comments. Linda is digging the inks. Simon Krupa, the ASMR was fun. Thank you. I am going to do one of those videos, I think. I need to familiarize myself with how they're done. And I wouldn't replace anything on the channel. I would just do it on the side. Okay. Kaylee says some great inks. Thanks. Glad you guys are digging it. I think this is fun. I don't often get to do this, but maybe we'll make this a regular thing. Because you'd be amazed at how many packages come in this house. Um, sometimes I order stuff. Sometimes it comes as a gift. Like this great snorkel pen. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Can't wait to fill that up. Okay, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Oh, okay. This, my friends. This is very cool. So this is from a brand that's very unrepresented on the channel. Very unrepresented. So look at that, huh? Sailor 1911 Compass. Wow, what do you guys think of this? Pretty neat. Ooh, very handy. Slides right off. Let's have a look. I kind of like how the converter is in its own package. Actually, now that I think about it, Sailor converters are proprietary, right? So this is great that it's here. That's very handy because I'd hate to have to find it. Also some cartridges, which I don't often use. And the main event, by the way, ink. 
the Sailor 1911 Compass. This is delightful. Look at this thing. How do I get it out? It's sealed. It's sealed, guys. I'm going to cut it open. Okay. C says nice. Thank you. This is fun, right? John Manuel's digging it. You know, you can always tell how old somebody is by their slang terms. Mine are ancient. There we go. Look at that. It sort of looks like a demonstrator. Really like it. Oh, it has good noise. Oh, that nib is gorgeous. Wow. I like that. Look at this, guys. Look at that. I love it. Huge fan of steel nib pens, too, by the way. I am no pen snob. Although some people mischaracterize me as one in the comments because we speak a lot about uh, Mont Blanc, Visconti, and whatnot, but I'm not. I love all pens. I'm super psyched for this 82 that seems to be writing well. And this one looks brilliant. I am psyched. It has a really nice screw cap. This is gorgeous. I really like the color. I don't even know how to characterize it. What do they call it? Transparent red. It's a medium fine nib. Now it's a medium fine sailor nib. It's probably more like a European fine. I, I'm psyched. I wonder if I could eyedropper this. Which, by the way, I'm kind of a coward. And I, I've never done. I wonder if I could. It sort of looks like it should, doesn't it? Maybe because it has doesn't have anything in there. A little bit of silicon. I don't know. What do you guys think? Anybody know? Uh, Techno Raptor says it's a lovely scarlet. I'm trying to put that comment up. Here you go. Agreed. Thank you. Wolverine, nice pen. HJ, the sailor pen. Works very well. A friend just got it and tried it this past Saturday. Oh, great. I'm glad. I love when it's a good one. Mario Pierre. Can't wait to hear your opinions on that one. On my list of pens to purchase in February. Oh, that's great. Well, Mario, it works both ways. Please, if you get it, let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm popping the uh, bubble wrap. So very cool pen. Wow, we're really, um, really getting some interesting stuff here, guys. Oh, I almost want to ink that up. I really do. All right, I'm going to show you the ink again because it had a chance to settle a bit. So here's the seven oceans. Very blue. This is good. This is like, this is pretty much my favorite sort of color this this is really high on the list there this is the kurataki meji which is also really nice this is going to look great on the page nice mario is also going to tell me what he thinks yep see mario the thing about this channel we're very much both ways um i collect so much information from you guys inspiration and information you guys keep the channel going the members do a great job of keeping me always creating new stuff i get so many interesting ideas from them as well so really good stuff so here's the loon very nice have you ever heard loons one of the great things about living in new england is if you go up in maine to um katahdin national park and you camp You'll hear the loons at night. And they're very haunting and very beautiful. Big fan of the loons. Phil Munson, my friend. If not metal connection, she should be able to eyedrop her O-ring and silicone. Yeah, I think I can. It sure looks it. Okay, guys, what's next? What's next? 
Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. You guys know what this is? You guys might think you know what this is, but do you know what this is? I'll bet I know what this is. All right, I don't think I need to use my pocket knife for this. I think there's a tear line. So when Brendan was on, when was he on? Back before Christmas, I think late November or early November. He talked about a very special Twisby 580 that he was going to give me as a gift. And um, I, I was very appreciative. And then he didn't mention it. I didn't mention it because, you know, that's rude. And uh, But you, you can tell this is not... This is not how your Twisby pens come, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, when you get your next Twisby, it won't be in a big ice bag like I use when I when I pull a muscle and I put it on my knee or something. That's not normally how they come. But yeah, uh, and they don't usually come full either. <laughs> I love Brendan. We're such good friends. He's the best, man. He's just such a lovely guy. So this, of course, is the Twisby 580 in Iris, a somewhat rare beast. Um, certainly one of the most beautiful Twisby pens. I wonder what ink he has in here. Should we look? I might not be able to identify it. I bet this came, I bet he was using it for, um, he does a lot on TikTok. I'll bet you anything he was doing TikToks. Oh, wow. It's like green. Oh, I just wrote Twizbill. Sometimes when you speak and write at the same time, you don't do so well. So I'm trying to get a lot of this on the page. Wow, I don't know what this ink is. It's pretty wild. Look at that. What do you think that is? I thought for a second that it might be um, Apache Sunset, but it's too green because it seemed to almost change. So pretty neat. Don't know what the ink is, but very appreciative. It feels like a fine nib, maybe even an extra fine. Should we look? We have the handy loop, guys. Be lost without this thing. It's a fine. It's just a fine. Very nice. Very nice pen. Put my glasses back on. My eyes don't get any larger with my glasses on. Ooh, this makes a good. This could be my ASMR pen. What do you think? Listen. Slowly take the iridescent nib and place the tines on the page. Only let the weight of the pen drive your nib. What do you think? Could I do this? Draw a confident, swirly line across the page. That's my ASMR video. It's coming soon to a YouTube near you. All right. I am over the moon about this because he said he was going to send this pen and I kind of felt like it was just too generous and I was like, no, I'm sorry. And he did. He's such a lovely guy. Lovely guy. Um, Amy D. I wonder if that's a Krishna ink. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if he carries Krishna inks because I'm assuming it's something he carries. But, um, I'll have to ask him. It's pretty great. Mario Pierre asks, am I also a watch collector? Is that a JLC or a Jeje Lacoutre? Um, um, I'm not really a watch collector. I like watches and I have a few, but I have kind of a very small and particular watch collection. My, um, 
day watch is a Rolex GMT Master II. And in the evenings, I like to put on my Cartier Must. So I think that this watch, and I won't stay down this rabbit hole for long, guys. We have one more pen to unbox. But just for those of you that are curious, this is a Cartier Must XL. And what makes this really special is you get this um, Flanique. I always forget what it's called, but they use silver and they put this like guilloche pattern on there. Uh, I'm not really good on jewelry terms, so feel free to make fun of me in the comments. But it's this whole section there in the center is not on the other tank musts. But in the XL, you get this extra beautiful silver-based embellishment which is really nice. But the biggest thing you get with this is an automatic movement. <laughs> it's the bubble wrap. It's a in-house Cartier 1847 MC movement, which is the same one I believe that they have in their Rondo and I think in the Santos. And you're getting all that for 4200 retail on a nice calf skin strap which I wanted. I didn't want the metal bracelet. I wanted it to be elegant. So, all right, end of watch discussion, but thanks for the question. Mario Pierre says, man, we are made of the same cloths. We share two interests. That's brilliant. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys, you didn't see what I just saw. Okay. I guess this is the main event. And it is quite a main event. Yeah, the bubble wrap is insidious, Amy. I had to move it because I kept popping it. And I hope it doesn't sound horrible over this. These microphones are very sensitive. By the way... I don't know if you guys noticed, but I upgraded my microphone about, I don't know what, maybe three weeks back. Did you notice? I used to have the one that sat on the table. Now I have this one. And this one is because my wife is doing or preparing to do some voiceover work. So she needed a really nice microphone. So I commandeered that microphone for our show. So hopefully my audio quality has improved. So hopefully... Okay. What do you guys think of that? You know what else this means? I have another crazy Italian pen. I love that. I love crazy Italian pens. Earlier I showed this one. The Visconti Mythos. Entry level Visconti for $160. With a Schmidt nib. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty. So what is this? Is it a disaster or is it a triumph? Find out Friday at noon. My next video comes up. You know me. I like crazy and chaotic pens. So just because I like it doesn't mean it's good. Also doesn't mean it's bad. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Art Mingle asks, oh, wait, your wife has a channel. No, my wife does not have a YouTube channel. I've been encouraging her, encouraging her to have one because she has this amazing um, 100 plus deck of tarot card collection back here. And I thought she could do a great channel. What my wife does is voiceovers because my wife has a really perfect accent. Uh, you know, perfect. You know what I mean? Really beautiful accent. It's like she has an English accent, but she can speak with American words that are our pronunciation, but with that accent. It's just really nice. I should have her do my um, voicemail. Evan Otto says, I'd like to get some more fancy pens. All pens are great, my friend. Fancy or not. I think it's time we open this one. Penider. Do the use the pocket knife to open the flap. 
Whoopsie. Okay. Wow, this is nice, guys. This is really nice. I have no idea what's in here, except that the packing slip's right here and I can read it. But beside that, I have no idea. So this is impressive because you get the Peniter box, which um, I have for my full mental jacket. So, oh, oh my gosh. You know, you know what's awesome about these pens? Do you, do you, have you guys ever bought one of these? I don't need, I can't believe what I saw when I opened this. I get so psyched with these because you get a little stationary kit. Did, did you know about this? So they open up like this. Oh, oh, look at this thing. Oh my God. Look at this guys. Look at that. So I'm not sure if it has to do with the movie because Peniter's always naming things after the movies. I'll have to look that up, but this is the Peniter Avatar Twin Tank in medium, guys. Oops, I'm unscrewing it. And it's a pull-off. It's in a medium nib, which is my favorite. Look at that. What do you think of that? It's kind of crazy, right? I know this is... Oh, wow. <laughs> that is cool. Oh, I, all right. I said I wouldn't use cool. That was unexpected. Oh my gosh. What? I oh my gosh. I can't believe this. This is so nerdy. The cap is magnetic. It just took me by surprise. And I'm geeking out. And you guys are seeing it live. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Did you see that? I'm going to let you hear it first. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The law of attraction. Isn't that great? Look, it's tight. That is so exciting. What a great cap mechanism. And this pen is so sleek and balanced in my hand. I wonder if it posts. Oh my gosh. Oh, does that post? Wow. Wow, does that post? We're going to do it again. Look at this. I hope I'm not losing you guys. This is amazing, but I have to show you something even more awesome. It was like a one-two punch. The magnetic cap. Watch this. Watch the fill mechanism. Watch this. Oh, my gosh. Can, can you see what's going on there? It's like spring-loaded. And look at that. Look at all the beautiful things on it. Ready? It says lock and unlock. Do you see that? Watch this. Oh, my gosh. Do you see it? How cool that is? Or... How interesting and well engineered. Look at that. Wow. Wow. This is interesting. Oh boy, does that build up vacuum? Wow. Wow. That is so interesting. So incredible. What do you guys think? I am just over the moon. I haven't been blown away by a pen like this, well, since my Visconti Homo sapiens, but this is really interesting. It's got a spring-loaded cap. I can't wait to re review this, but it's going to have to be more than a review this time. We have to have a theme, maybe transparency. It's exquisite, guys. Exquisite. I have no idea what this costs. He didn't put prices. So I would say this feels so well engineered, so luxurious. And of course, we don't know how it writes yet, but it is stunning. Just stunning and so amazing to use. So we're going to come up with a theme for this one. But that's not all, as they say, because Peniter comes with stationery. And sometimes they come with a little note to you. So this is sealed. 
Let's see what this is. Maybe it's like the warranty card or something. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so it's it's called the Avatar Traveler. Twin Tanks Touchdown. And there's a whole bunch of words here. I'm going to spare you. But it does have the uh, international guarantee and all that. And um, I guess you fill out your own warranty card. But I'm sure you can do that online, which is what I'll do. But the um, Full Mental Jacket came with a whole set of stationery. And this does too. Look at this. Set of cards. Should we open it? We should open it. Right, guys? Yes. Awesome. Oh, this, this is nice. Okay, so see, we have a very um, yellowish cardstock with a matching envelope, which is brilliant. Then, oh, this is so great, guys. Then we have a, a really bleachy white one with a matching envelope. And a almost gendered pinky one with a corresponding blue. Very traditional pink and blue. And then another white. And then another white. And another tan. That's a lot of note stock. Some of the Illuminati and Cognoscenti members may be getting correspondences on here. Actually, I usually write longer than this. You get like three full pages from me. Or thereabouts. Wow. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Was that the geekiest thing you've ever seen me do? Stick around. I'm sure I'll do more. But... My tummy's loud today, guys. I hope you can't hear that. Peter Puglio, magnetic types are great. Monteverdi makes some at affordable prices. I'm, a, I'm tired of screwing around with screw caps. You know, you do a lot of screwing with screw caps during the day. You unscrew them, rescrew them, unscrew them many times. It's kind of nice when you can do it quickly, like the Caveco Brass Sport, where you can just sort of spin it and it just comes undone. And then you want to put it away and you can just. Spin it and it sticks. That's kind of nice. Not every pen does that. By the way, look how nice and tarnished this is getting. And that's all honest wear, guys. That's from being at the beach, from being up in Salem, from going out in the woods here where I live in the west of uh, Boston area. So very cool. Kaylee, the yellowish will look great with that green gold inky scent. Indeed. Indeed it will. So we have some really interesting stuff. And to recap, in case you're joining me now. Wow, I just blew right past the hour mark. Sorry, guys. The Pinator Avatar in medium. Oopsie. That's the warranty card. Twin Tank Touchdown. Twin Tank Touchdown. Wow, is this a cool pen. This is cool. Thank you, Brendan. So that's one. And one slightly used Twisby 580 Iris. And can I tell you guys, I cherish this so much more that it's his pen. Like now it's like, I'll never part with this. I'll just always remember that my friend Brendan saved this for me, made a ton of content for TikTok. And when he was done with it, he sent it to me. That means a lot. It really means a lot. Really awesome there. And Wolverine's digging his Caveco brass sport. Very good. The Sailor Compass, 1911. Brilliant. Gorgeous. Possibly an eyedropper. Possibly. 
And then three really cool inks. The Loon. Beautiful black. The Seven Colored Ocean from Varing Jewel. A very deep blue. And a really cool ink from Karateki Meji. And a beautiful, beautiful bottle. That was a pretty amazing, pretty amazing selection from Brendan, wasn't it? Um, C says, I wonder which ink you're going to pair that Pinator with. Well, it being transparent gives me a lot of options. I'm thinking maybe the Loon, because black would be cool, but then I got this Varanjul. Maybe I'll go that route. I don't know. Allie J says, Brendan is great. I love those guys. Me too. Content looked really small, the comment for a second. So very cool stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we have really lapped the hour mark. So that's good, though. I'm glad we can talk. So this Friday, we have the review of the Visconti Mythos. Absolutely interesting pen. I'm not going to say too much because I want you to watch my review. And please do if you're a fan of the channel. And also, guys, if you've watched this long, please subscribe. It really helps. It's so hard to get noticed out there in YouTube. I'm just very small, and the YouTube doesn't do a lot to help to get the word out there. So I would appreciate a follow, a subscribe. It's good content. It's fountain pen videos for very curious people. We cover inks, journals, journaling, self-expression, a lot of things in this channel, and everybody's welcome here. This is a really supportive, wonderful community for everyone to take part in and enjoy, respect everyone. It's just fantastic. We have the best people in our comment section. So. I invite you to come along for this journey because it's really a wonderful group of people. I'm privileged to be like Prospero and to direct the swirling maelstrom of creativity and awesomeness that surrounds me each time I come on the live show or each time I post a video. You guys are super special and you mean everything to me. So thank you. It's a very different place we've created here because you guys are all very good people, very generous with your knowledge. So thanks for that. So I think we said it all. It was quite a night. So I want to thank you all for joining me and for sharing in this awesome moment. I can't wait to delve in deeper. I'm sure you'll see some videos on this as well, even though it's all meant for a different platform. But still, things have a habit of always showing up on YouTube. YouTube is my home. This is where I make most of what I do. So thank you all for being here. We will see each other again very soon further up the road. So everyone, take care. Thanks again.